before we begin, I've been playing the closed beta test for Withering Waves for... I don't even know how long at this point. It's, it's coming close to like 10 hours, probably by now. It's probably getting close to 10 hours. I've pretty much played it every day since it released. Streamed it every day since it released. And what I want to talk about is the good, the bad, and the ugly of the of this beta. And um, starting with the good, obviously the good the good things are everything that I think the game does right, and essentially what I'm praising the game for, right? So starting off with the gameplay is really, really, really smooth it's really fun it's really responsive the movement feels amazing when you're running around the open world you have all of these different animations right like vaulting over benches or you know uh just different climbing animations you know running up walls obviously it's a bit janky in the beta when it works it's amazing it feels really good and yeah this is definitely one of the the highlights right the overall feel of the game is great so moving on to the second thing the story is entertaining for the most part now what i mean by this the story seems to switch around between lore focused chapter and then we have a gameplay focused chapter right we have essentially an info dump and then we actually get to experience the game and the only reason why i put this as a good thing is because this game has a really goddamn high highs right it it has high highs and low lows but i still think the lows are not as low to put it as like a bad thing uh, especially since well in this game when the story picks up it really picks up right it's really entertaining it's really interesting and yeah it's it's pretty goddamn engaging i know they changed a lot of it from cbt1 to cbt2 and i definitely could say that they did a pretty good job right i still don't like the amount of info dumps we have but i i'm, I'm willing to survive through the info dumps if then we're getting awarded with a uh, sick gameplay sequence right or like a, a boss fight that's relevant to the story or something it's really 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 it's adequate right it's 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 adequate for a game of this type next thing visuals i mean you can see for yourself the game looks pretty damn great especially when you start using abilities and all the different effects appear you use you know switch into all the different echoes and it's all really smooth it's really pretty it's great the game looks really, really, really damn good. Next thing. The gacha is really damn generous. Now, what do I mean by this? Uh, from other similar games, you might be used to the, the system that the other gacha games have, right? So you have a 90. So at 90, you have pity. You're guaranteed to get a 5 star at 90. This game is different. You're guaranteed a 5 star at 80 but while the cat for the character you still have a 50 50 for the weapon you don't you are guaranteed that's not the right menu you are guaranteed the weapon every single five star that drops from this banner will be the verdant summit and going forward each time you pull a 5 star from this banner, it will be the limited 5 star. So you don't have to worry about losing a 50-50 to the weapon banner, right? So the, you know, the Staff of Homa incident it literally can't happen in this game. <laughs> it's literally impossible. You're guaranteed to get this weapon. Also, there is a beginner banner, like in Genshin, but I already uh, used all of the pulls on it, so it now disappeared. But you also have a uh, separate banner for standard 5-star characters and standard 5-star weapons. Now what's cool about this 
is you can choose which five star weapon you want to get from it right so say from the beginner banner you get a character that uses a sword then you can pretty much guarantee that you're gonna get a five star sword from this banner right so that's really 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 cool the boss music is amazing not all of the music in this game is great but i think that the developers have their priorities straight right when you're walking around the world it's a lot more amb amb ambient you probably won't even realize that there's music playing in the background the music that plays when you're fighting regular enemies out in the open world is not really that great i have to be honest it's just something in the background it's whatever but once you start fighting the bosses which is where the game shines anyway then the music picks up so much it's honestly amazing it's again it's a, it has high highs and low lows but the highs are so high i'm willing to excuse the lows you know so yeah that's definitely something you should look forward to is the music for the boss fights okay another thing the game actually uses modern technologies what do i mean by this if you go over to the settings menu right and scroll down we have stuff like Nvidia Nvidia reflex we have DLSS we have frame generation right and this might not seem like a big thing but honestly this is very big Nvidia reflex get your input to the game as quickly as possible so that the game feels more responsive DLSS makes the game run better frame generation essentially doubles your frame rate unfortunately it's only available for uh, 4000 series gpus i believe i'm uh, i may be wrong on that but i think i am correct that it's only available on the rtx 4000 series last but not least which is actually a topic i'm gonna come back to is the world is very pretty and varied now what i mean by varied right over here we have a city we have forests right these little maps so that we have mountains we have a desert area we have a ruined city we have a mine we have ports there is a lot of stuff on the map and it is really 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 nice to explore it's really nice to see all of these different structures and different biomes i guess you could say <laughs> for the first time it's really nice it definitely helps the game stand out, right? And that sums up about everything from uh, the good. Now, we will go to the bad. The bad is things that I don't like with the game, but I don't think they will be changed, unfortunately. First of all, some of the daily quests are a waste of goddamn time. What do, you, what do I mean by that? Today, I actually got lucky, believe it or not. And I got a qu daily quest of defeating five exiles. But the last two streams, I got literally the same daily quest of go talk to an NPC and that's it. All those quests were, were go talk to an NPC, quest done. It's a waste of time for the player because the a player sure is not engaged by just mashing left click until the dialogue stops. And the developers are pretty much wasting time on it because... Obviously, it's not, it's not like it just appears in the game on its own, right? The developers have to write the dialogue. The, the developers have to implement the quest into the game. And yet it feels like a waste because it's just, it's just unvoiced dialogue that doesn't really bring in anything to the story, right? It's, it's going to be fanservice-y at best. But again, how many people are actually going to read the dialogue from a goddamn side quest, from a da da daily quest? I doubt it's gonna be that many people. Next thing. The element of your character does not matter. It literally doesn't does not matter what element the, 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 your character is. Right? The main character is Spectro, but he could be Fusion, he could be Arrow, he could be Glacio, it would not change anything. It's very much a rock, paper, scissors scenario, right? There doesn't seem to be any bonuses for having the same element in your team. There doesn't seem to be any bonuses for having different elements in your team. You have, you know, synergies between characters, between individual characters. 
but that's that's where it ends right that that's it so yeah i, I just think it's wasted potential really I, like you already have the system in the game why not do something with it it feels like they're just going to use the system to promote the limited characters right because you do have the a game mode over here, Tower, Tower of Adversity, which seems to be the equivalent of uh, Spiral Abyss or the Forgotten Hall. So you, this is the place you're going to be coming back to to get your f free shit for fighting, right? I expect the developers to just, you know, when the game releases, all the enemies are going to be weak to Arrow, you know, to promote the guy that's currently on the limited banner. But I, I'm, I can guarantee you, as soon as this banner ends, and the next, you know, Tower of Adversity refreshes, every single enemy is going to be arrow resistant and they're going to be weak to the element of the next limited 5-star. Which, I mean, it does promote the limited character, but it, I, I don't feel it's very consumer friendly. So the last thing of the bad will be the map does not do the world justice. What do I mean by this? This is something that's connected to the world being vast and varied. Although I said all of these good things about it, the map still does not do its justice, right? And I have the best example over here. I have two examples, right? First of all, here. When looking at this from the map, you might think, okay, this is just some village, maybe a camp, right? Nothing really crazy. It's probably not very different from this one over here. But if you actually go and teleport to this place, that looks very boring on the map, you realize it's the goddamn village with the pink trees in it. It might not seem like a big deal, right? But this map is pretty big as is. And the more landmarks are visible on the map, the easier it will be to find your way around, around it. Why is that not shown on the map, right? Because you show this map, to I don't know, maybe returning players or you know someone's playing for the for the first time when they are going through the tutorial area they see the pink trees in in the distance right the, that is something you can see while going to the city for the first time and you know they unlock the map and they'll be like oh okay what's what's what was that pretty area with the pink trees i want to see that i want to explore that right so they you know unlock the next the nearby nexuses they unlock the the map and then well where is it Right? They just kind of have to guess. Where is it? Uh, another good good example of this is right over here. You might already realize. Look at this direction. You have a big sort of, you know, tree stump with mushrooms growing out. There is a lot of blue incorporated. And then this is, this is by far the most egregious. Right? On the map, this seems like a dead tree. Right? There is some branches, but there is no leaves. There is no nothing. But you actually go to this place and take a look at this. This looks amazing. I love the, the, the mixture between the, you know, the green and the purple leaves. So my question is, why the hell is this not shown on the map? Same thing for this, right? This, this is the tree with the... This is the tree stump with the blue mushrooms. But it's completely got them grayed. It's grayed out. Why? And I did think it, it looks like an uh, area that's not unlocked, but I unlocked all the teleporters that are nearby. I fought this boss, I defeated this boss. Yet it's still grey. What's even worse, when you teleport to it, you'll realize that there is so many more colors here. Like look at this, there's red red mushrooms, red flowers. There is color, you know the the entire surrounding area is covered in snow, but on the map it's just not displayed. It's baffling. The map really does not do the world justice. Yeah, the last the last thing from the bad is the boost that the characters get from additional copies does not make any sense. Let me explain why. Let's take two characters that you get for free by just playing the game, right? You have her, and then you get her from a login uh, event, right? You log in fi for five days in a row, and you get her. So let's look at uh, what's 
let's look at what she gets from copies, right? Look at the first thing. The skill has a guaranteed crit. Okay, that's great. Right, you have energy. You have in increased. You have increased the damage by forty percent. You have all of these different, you know, buffs. You have increased attack by thirty percent. You know, just like a lot of good and valuable buffs. Okay, now you go to this character, and it seems. You know, she's pretty similar. At first, right? it seems pretty similar. Then we go to the fifth copy. Increases arrow damage by 3%. Now, I don't know how about you, but I think... Increases damage by 3% and increases attack by 30% is a pretty damn big gap. Right? This is the exact same slot. And it goes between arrow damage by 3% and attack by 30%. Granted, it is conditional. But still, it, the difference is kind of ridiculous. Also, in case you didn't know, this character is Glacio. <laughs> so her getting arrow damage is completely useless <laughs> to begin with. So you might think this is a glitch. But I think the only thing they're going to do is change this to Glacio. And actually just leave it as 3% dam bonus damage. Simply because the main character has the same thing. Right? Increases fusion damage by 3%. Increases fusion damage by 3%. So I do think this is in she is supposed to just have increases her damage by 3% as one of her copies. Which that is I mean it's it's baffling, right? It's kind of baffling. And I played other gacha games and obviously some bonuses from the copies that you get are going to be weaker or stronger than others, right? It's not going to be standardized. It's impossible. It's pretty much impossible to standardize how much of a damage bonus they will the character will get with each copy. But so Wuthering Waves has by far the biggest gap in power that the character can get from at least from all of the gacha games I have played. Moving on to the last thing, the ugly. Okay? And all the all things categorized as the ugly are Things that are in the game right now, but I expect them to be changed when the full game releases. First of all, there's obvious things, right? Like, you know, uh, this Resonance Nexus does not play the animation, which is which you can see on the video where I explored the entire map. Right, some descriptions are broken. Right, these, these are obvious things that are going to be uh, fixed when the game comes out of beta, but I still wanted to, you know, just shine a light on them to, you know, just show that yes, this game still is clearly in beta, it will still take time, uh, probably around half a year until the game is fully released. There does still need to be a lot of work done. First actual real complaint that I think needs to be fixed is you can only rank up weapons one by one. So as you can see, I have five copies of the Rectifier of Voyager, right? And this sounds pretty good. When using the skill, it recovers more energy. I mean, that sounds good, right? So let's upgrade it. Let's rank it up. And then I can only rank it up one by one, right? As I press one, the other one is gets uh, deselected. And it's not a big thing. I know it's probably going to be a problem only for the whales. But, I mean, even, even you know, free to plays as the game comes out, a lot of us are probably going to be using, you know, maxed ranked up three-star weapons. That is just what you do at the start of the game. And then, you know, four stars even. You know, if you get lucky and get a bunch of copies of a four-star weapon, then you also will have to rank it up one by one by one by one. And it just does not make much sense. I don't think there should be any technical limitation as to why uh, you could only be ranking it up one by one. I do think it should be changed and I think it will. But if it doesn't, that, uh, I told you a way a long time ago that it should be, even before the game came out of closed beta. Next thing, which might sound contradictory to what I've said before, but hear me out, okay? You know how I praise the game for having modern technologies? I will take away a point from the game 
for including DLSS specifically. Now, what is DLSS? Well, what is uh, essentially super resolutions, right? They are all different types of super resolutions. You have the one from NVIDIA called the DLSS. You have one from AMD called FSR. And you have one from Intel called the XESS. And all that you need to know is that they all do the same thing, but slightly differently. Okay. And the FSR, which is AMD's solution, works on pretty much any graphics card you could find. I, I'm not kidding. It works on pretty much anything. The results, the results are not as good as DLSS, but it works on pretty much anything. And the reason why the inclusion of DLSS specifically is kind of baffling is that DLSS only works on RTX graphics cards, which shouldn't have a problem running the game anyway. So this is an extremely niche option that's, this all, that's only really here for people who have an RTX graphics card and want to push the game's resolutions to like, I don't know, like 4K, 1440p, but don't have the graphics cards, don't have the raw processing power to handle it. So then they switch on DLSS and then they can enjoy the uh, higher resolutions without taking as much of a performance hit. But uh, yeah, why DLSS? You know, out of all of the options, I think uh, Intel's XESS also works on pretty much any graphics card. So why did they include the one that only works on RTX graphics cards? It's kind of like baffling, right? And it's not like the games could only have one or the other. You look at pretty much any modern title, like, you know, Cyberpunk. Uh, Tekken 8, they have a bunch of different upscaling methods, you know, the, the super resolutions, and it, it works fine, right? You can have multiple and just let the player choose, but this only has DLSS, which, again, it's it's just kind of, why? Why specifically DLSS? I would want to know what was the thinking process behind putting specifically DLSS and not any other method. And yeah, I do hope that there's going to be uh, more included when the game releases. Last thing, also regarding uh, performance. This game has a really goddamn big problem. And what I've noticed is the game struggles to run on my PC, right? Which my PC is above the recommended specs in pretty much every way you could imagine, right? So I thought, okay, at, at first I thought, okay, it's a beta, it's probably not optimized very well. But it, it, it was pretty weird how the game run, right? So let me pull up my uh, program that measures the statistics and take a look at this. My RTX 3060 is struggling to run the game at 60 FPS. Bear in mind, this is above the recommended spec. Now what is happening? You might already realize the game is not utilizing my PC at all, right? The graphics card is, is used 50%. The processor is used 45%. The game, for some reason, just refuses to use more of my system. And yeah, it just struggles to run because of it. I don't know what is causing it. It, it does change area from area, right? Like, the city barely uses 40 to 50. And uses 40% of my uh, CPU, right? My processor. But let's go out, out of the city. And what you'll notice is the frame rate is actually a bit higher, right? It's not actually struggling to, to maintain 60. It's now more closer to 70. And the, the graphics card is actually used by you know, 60%. It's actually doing something now. The processor still uses that 40, 40, around 40%. So my prediction as to what is happening is that the game is programmed in a way where it is very limited as to how many processor, processor cores it can use. Not being able to utilize all of the cores of the processor is a big, big, big problem. A CPU that, that, uh, that has six cores and 12 threads will perform the best when all 6 cores and 12 threads are used. It, when it can spread the workload over all of the cores and the threads, which it does not seem to be able to do 
and withering waves because the game has some sort of a cap as to how many how much of the processor it can actually use yeah this is definitely something this is definitely a big one that needs that needs i will underline this this needs to be fixed before the game releases and yeah this will be the end for uh, this section if you enjoyed the overview of the Woodrow Wave CBT, CBT2 uh, beta and yeah I'll go and enjoy the game a little bit more on the live stream but for the video that will be it so um, yeah whether you were watching it live on Twitch or on YouTube I thank you very much and I will see, see you in the next one until then goodbye